Hey guys, and welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'll be showing you how to set up the searchable actors. In this case, I'm using chests. So you can see when you walk up to the chest, you'll get the little E to search. And then if you hold down E for a long enough time, it'll open the chest. And of course, if you like walk away in the middle of it, it will stop searching. Or if you let go of E, it will reset. Um, and just to be like totally clear, this tutorial isn't going to cover like items com coming out of the chest or picking up items somehow. I have many other tutorials on items and picking up items and inventory management and stuff like that. And I'll link those in the description if you're curious about them. Uh, this tutorial is specifically about like searchable items and in this case chests. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So I'm going to start a totally new project here so you guys can follow along without any trouble and i'm on version i'm actually on not that version i'm on 4.25.1 so i'd recommend being on this one or newer if you can and we'll go ahead and watch this give it a second to launch all right so once this is open we want to select games down here and then hit next and then i used the third person template so it's like that, and then blueprints, no starter content, required, and I'm going to rename this to chest tutorial, and then go ahead and create the project. So there's actually a good amount of stuff that goes into creating something like this, because you need to have a way to know if you're close enough to the chest to open it, and you need to have that little circular progress bar. So there's a good amount of things involved, so we're not going to dive into creating the chest right away. Um, but the first thing we are going to do is import the assets that we need. So if you right click and make a new folder here, actually go up to the content directory first if you want to do it exactly like I'm doing it. And I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it assets. And then open this folder up. And then inside of here is where we're going to drop our chest and one other texture that we're going to need. Now, if you already have a chest or something that you're using, then obviously you don't need to use mine. But if you don't, then in the description of this video, there'll be a folder that, well, there'll be a link to a folder that you can download. And inside of there, it should look something like this. You should have like a chest folder that has some textures and an FBX file. And then one more texture on the outside that looks like this circle. So let's go ahead and do the chest first. So go back to this chest folder and then drag in the FBX file down here. We wanna change a couple of things about this. Uh, we wanna change the rotation on the Z by negative 90. And this is just so it's facing the X axis. It's just the way I like my models to be since that's the way Unreal expects them to be. And then we also wanna change the scale to be 0 0.5 simply because the chest is a little bit bigger than it should be. So if we scale it here on import, then we don't have to worry about it ever again. And then we can go ahead and press import all. And as you can see, that brought in our chest. Let me just double check here to make sure it's the right size and everything. Looks like it is. And you can see it's in two pieces. We have the base of the chest and the top of the chest. And we need it this way so that we can open it through code. All right, so we can delete these from the scene. And then we want to drag in our textures. So drag these in as well. And then from these textures, we want to um, apply them to this material over here. So open up this material. Actually, I'm going to rename it real quick to M underscore chest. And I'm going to rename these as well, just because they're kind of terribly named. I'm going to rename this one to T for texture and then uh, base color. T underscore chest normals and T underscore uh, O for oculus or occlusion, uh, R for roughness, and M for metallic. And then one thing we want to do for this thing right here, this texture, the ORM texture, this is a map texture. It's used for a couple different things. So if we open this up, we actually want to change the settings on it real quick. Um, over here on the right, we want to change this to masks no sRGB. And you can see it will uncheck this sRGB checkbox and it will say that we're using this as a mask texture. So we can just save that and close. And then back in the material, let's open this guy up now. 
So this is the chest material, and I'm just going to kind of expand it here and then zoom in. Uh, we can just drag in, let me delete this one. So we can just drag in these three textures into here, like so. And now that they're dragged in, I'm going to make this maximized, and then we just need to hook it up. So the base color one goes on top, normal goes in the middle, and these go on the bottom. And then the base color goes into the base color, the normal goes into the normal. And this one is ORM, so the R goes into ambient occlusion, the G goes into the roughness, and the B goes into the metallic. And there is our material. And we can hit apply and save. And if we come back to here and we take a look at these guys, you can see they now have nice materials on them, like so. And then one more thing we need to do for this chest is we need to add a socket to it for where the top attaches to the base. So if we open this up, we can see this is the front since it has the lock. So we wanna add a socket back here. So on the right, we can hit create socket and I'll just call this the attach socket. And we can adjust this later, but for now, just drag it somewhere around here, like, so it's, you know, kind of where the lid would attach, if you can imagine. And we might have to adjust this here in a little bit, but for now, that's uh, good enough. And we can file and save. Um, so I guess we can create the chest blueprint first, but then we're going to have to do some other stuff before we can actually make it open. But since we're on the topic of the chest, let's go ahead and kind of actually make the blueprint for it. So back here in the content browser, let's right click, make a new blueprint class. And we want to select actor for the parent. We'll call this BP underscore chest. And if we double click on it, we can open it up for editing. And then we want to be in the viewport tab so we can kind of see what's going on here. And on the left, we want to add a few components. So the first thing we want to add, if you hit this add component button, is a static mesh. And this is going to be for the bottom half of the chest. So I'm going to call this chest bottom. And then with the chest bottom selected, hit add component again and add another static mesh. And we'll call this chest top. So this is obviously the top or the lid for the chest. And let's set these. So click on the chest bottom and we want to search for, I forget what it's called, chest. Yeah, so we want to select the chest plane. They're kind of weird, weirdly named. Perhaps we should go back and rename these real quick. I'm going to go back here and just rename this to sm underscore chest bottom and sm underscore chest top, just so it's a little bit more obvious what they are. And then back in the chest, so we have the bottom and then the chest top, we want to select the chest top. And as you can see, by default, it kind of adds it incorrectly, and that's because we're not using that socket. So if we select with the chest top selected, if we select the parent socket over here and we hit the attach socket, you'll see it snaps it into place. And this is where I was talking about you might need to adjust it. Um, you can see there's a little bit of a gap, so it looks like we just need to move it down a little bit. Uh, so let me just move it down. I'm going to turn off the snapping up here, or turn it down to one at least. Turn down my camera speed so I can see what's going on. I'll just snap it down like Maybe that's enough. And if you hit save and then you come back here and you recompile, you can see it moved it down. So you can play with it to get it perfect, but this is uh, close enough for right now. All right, so now we have our chest um, set up, at least the static mesh portion of it. And we will come back and finish this chest blueprint later. The next thing we need to do is set up a, a way to be able to interact with the chest. Because right now, obviously we can't, um, there's no like code to detect if we're close enough to the chest to open it. And we need that before we can even think about writing the open code. So back here in our content folder, in the base folder here, let's right click. And we're going to create something called a blueprint interface. So if you go to the blueprints uh, tab thing and select blueprint interface, and I'm going to call it the interact interface. And if you've watched my tutorials, some other ones, you've probably seen me do something similar. 
This is a really good way to handle interacting with objects. You basically, you create an interface and then anything that implements that interface, you'll be able to interact with. And it just kind of standardizes it as opposed to having the code, you know, in all the different components. Like let's say you have a chest that you want to interact with and you have a light switch and you have like a flashlight and all these different things that you want to be able to interact with. You could write the code in each one of them individually or you can make an interact interface and it'll kind of standardize the way it works. So let's go ahead and open this up and we'll write the functions that we want for the interaction. So there's gonna be four different uh, functions and basically these functions are gonna be implemented by anything in your game, like the chest, for example, that can be interacted with. So the first one is gonna be called on overlap begin. And so this event is gonna get called when the player is close enough to the object to interact with it, but he hasn't actually interacted it with, with it yet. And we need this because we need to be able to know when we should show that little widget that pops up to say, hey, press E to search or whatever. Um, and so we obviously, we also wanna have one for on, inter on overlap end. So we'll make another function called on overlap end. And then we'll make another one called on interact begin. So this one's gonna get called when you actually interact with it, like when you press the E key. And then we wanna have one for on interact end. So on interact end. And we can just compile and save and close this guy. So now that we have our interaction interface defined, we want to tell our chest blueprint that it is interactable. And we can do that by implementing that interact interface. And you can do that at the top here if you go to the class defaults, or sorry, the class settings. And under interfaces on the right, we want to hit add. And you should just be able to search for interact interface and select the interact interface. So now this chest implements the interact interface. And so once we write the code inside of the player to handle that, uh, we'll be able to interact with it. So let's go hop into our player and write that code next. So if we select our player, and then over here we can hit this little blueprint or edit a third person character to open our character's blueprint. So inside of here, we wanna write a little bit of code that basically is going to say, when I get close to an object that's interactable, call the on begin um, overlap event so that the interactable object knows that we're close enough to it. And that way it can like show a little widget that says, hey, press this button to interact with me. And then we also wanna write code for when the player actually presses the interact button to tell the thing that we're close to that we interacted with it. So to do that, um, in order to, to figure out if we're close enough to an object to interact with it, we're gonna actually add a little collision circle around our character. And then anything that gets inside of this circle, we will deem as close enough to be interacted with. So back in the viewport tab, hit add component, and we'll just search for collision sphere, or sphere collision, and select that. And then we just need to give it a bigger radius, because you can see right now it's pretty small. So I'm gonna set the sphere radius to something like 200. So now anything that gets within this radius will be a candidate to interact with. And one other thing that's really important is make sure, I think it's this by default, but if you click on the sphere and search for a collision over here, you wanna make sure that the collision preset is set to overlap all dynamic, otherwise it's not gonna work correctly. But I think it's that by default in pretty much all versions. All right, so now that we have the sphere defined, we can go back to the event graph, and we want to know when something gets inside of that sphere. So to do that, we can just select it over here, or right click it actually, and say add event and say on component begin overlap. So this is gonna get called whenever anything in the world overlaps with this sphere that's around us. And likewise, we wanna know when something stops overlapping with it. So we can right click on it again, add event, and add component end overlap. So now we have our begin and our end. And essentially what we wanna do inside of here is we wanna check if the thing that we overlapped with implements that interact interface. And if it does, then we wanna let that thing know that we're close enough to it to interact with. So to do that, we can drag off the other actor, which the other actor is just the thing that we overlapped with. And we can say does implement interface. And the interface we wanna check for is the interact interface, so set that. And then we can drag off of this and create a branch and hook that up like so. And so if it does implement that interface, then we want to call 
this on overlap begin event that we created inside of our interla uh, interact interface. So I'm just going to double click to create a reroute node, kind of drag this down, and then drag this over and say on overlap begin. And you can see it's from our interact interface. So this is the one we want to call. Hook that up to the true. And just to kind of clean it up a little bit. So there, that's really all we need. And we want to do the same thing down here, except instead of going on begin overlap, we want to call on end overlap. So let me just get this over. So I'm just going to copy all of this and hook it up like so. Make sure you hook it up to other actor. And then, like I said, we want to change this to on overlap begin. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to say on overlap end. So basically, whenever anything overlaps with this circle around the player, this event's going to get called. And if the thing that we overlapped with implements the interact interface, then we're going to call on overlap begin. And likewise, when we end overlap, we do the same thing, except we call on overlap end. Okay. So now that we have that set up, we can go ahead and kind of test it a little bit to some degree. So we can go back to our chest blueprint. And if we go to the event graph, and inside of here, we want to uh, we want to say that we implement. Oh, we already did. So we already added the interact interface. I forgot. So if you look over here on the left, now that this is added, we have this dropdown for interfaces. And you can see these are the four different events that we specified are part of that interface. And the reason they're showing over here is because we've specified that we are implementing this interface. So it's given us these events for us to implement. And if you right click on one of them, like the on, or let's do this one. So on overlap begin. If we right click on this and we say implement function, it will implement this event on overlap begin for us. And so essentially what's happening is whenever, back over here, whenever this gets called on overlap begin, it's gonna call this event on overlap begin. Now let's do the same thing for on overlap end, right click and say implement function. And for now, let's just do a little print string so we can see it's working. We'll say print string overlapped chest. And I'm just gonna copy this. I'm gonna say stopped overlapping chest. So compile and save, file state all. If we come back and we run this, oh, I forgot to add a chest to our world. Let's go ahead and drag in a chest. Doesn't really matter where. So if we walk close to the chest, you can see at the top left, it said overlap chest. And it printed it out twice, that's fine. That's just because there's two meshes um, associated with this chest. But that won't actually uh, hurt anything once we finish writing it. But you can see once we get close to it, it says overlap chest. And when we go away, it says stopped overlap chest. So make sure that works at this point in the tutorial. If it doesn't, go back and make sure you follow it along correctly. All right, so back in the third person character. Um, oh, actually, let's. Uh, I'm going to stop this and make a part two at this point, just because this video is getting kind of long. So I'll see you guys uh, in part two.